All right, guys, so beautiful day here. One of the things, we got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, one of the things I got to do is get this fuel tank, if you saw. Uh, our previous video, I got a 90 gallon RDS fuel tank, scored that. Uh, it's used, but it's in great shape. Uh, so I got that, I gotta get that installed. Uh, and I gotta figure out how I'm gonna plumb it up, whether I'm gonna use a solenoid uh, drain, a gravity drain, or a 12 volt fuel pump that pulls from the top and i think that's what i'm leaning towards but i've got to get the tank itself mounted uh, in the bed of the truck so that's what we're going to start working on today all right so there's the rds tank uh, i gotta get it mounted in place one thing i gotta figure out is so <clears throat> i'm gonna have a tonneau cover on here hopefully shortly the only problem i see is the fill nozzle is right here in this corner um so if i have a tonneau cover depending on you know depending on what type i have if it's a rollback or a flip back that would cause an issue with me being able to fill this thing up so what i'll have to do is actually get an adapter to go in this port uh for the uh for the gas cap for the filling uh, but i did put that uh locking stamp cap on there to keep people out so what i'm going to do is unstrap this thing and get it centered up drill a few holes uh, i'm going to move it out just a little bit uh, so the lid will open on the toolbox get that put in place and then the fuel pump we'll talk about i believe i'm going to mount it right here uh bolted to the side of the toolbox section uh, it'll pull out of this port right here and I've got a pickup tube that goes down in there that will sit at the bottom of the tank. Pick up fuel down that. So vent tube right there. So all right, let's see what we can do about this. So this is just the way I'm doing it. If you're going to put a tank in, then make sure you research what you're doing and do it the way you think should, it should be done. So, cause this is just what I'm doing. Um, and putting it out there on the interweb. So everything's the green. Springtime has turned everything green quickly. So I'm gonna take, let's see, I'm gonna take this plug right here uh, and go ahead and plug up uh, the drain on this tank since we're gonna be pulling fuel from up here. Uh, and it's not gonna be gravity draining. Now, <clears throat> when you do this, a lot of people talk about using uh, Teflon tape and stuff like that. Don't do that because the diesel fuel or the gasoline or whatever you've got in there is going to eat that tape. Uh, this is uh, Permatex Aviation uh, Forma Gasket. This is some super duper stuff. Uh, it's designed to seal against aviation fuel. So that's what you need to be using. Word to the wise though. And if you've ever used it, you are well aware that this is some super sticky stuff. Like, so try not to get it on your hands because it is a booger bear to get off. Uh, and it doesn't really 100% cure. So don't go touching it after it's been on there a while. It kind of stays in a gel form. Uh, best stuff I've found for sealing up fuel tanks. Just try not to get it on your hands because it's a pain to get off. Make sure that you are visiting our website at homeonhoots.com, getting all the information for our Hoot and Nanny camp out October 13th through the 16th. Come to the Hoot Nanny. All right, so we got the tank bolted in as well as a strap, and just use that small orange strap temporarily. I'll get a, I'm gonna get a wider black strap, and I've got to replace the gas struts. As you just saw, they're not up to snuff, but I'll replace those. That's easy enough to do. This is the fuel pump that I've got, uh, and it's like an 8 PSI 12 volt fuel pump. Now the question is, <coughs> where am I going to mount that? Um, and to be honest with you, I think I'm going to mount it here on the outside of this tank. That way it can just kind of bolt it through toolbox and keep it stable. It'd be easy to change if I need to change it. If there was a pump failure, this I think, I'm pretty sure that it's not gonna have any problem lifting uh, the fuel, uh, the 12 inches from the bottom of the tank. 
we will definitely find out if that is the case or not. So I just have a hose barb in and a hose barb out. So it'll go from the fuel pump on the tank down to this filter and then out uh, to the adapter that is spliced in the fuel fill hose. So basically the way that works is that adapter that's up on screen now uh, splices into your actual uh, fuel fill hose where you fill up at the pump. Uh, on the top there, it's got a little port for uh, a ball valve, rollover valve. Um, that will let fuel drip in and nothing go back the other way, number one. Uh, and when it fills up, uh, the, per it's, the design is that it floats that ball up and shuts off the flow of fuel. Most of the time that works, but a lot of the times it doesn't work. Uh, you can have a lot of issues with it. When you install those, they have to be installed where that valve, that over uh, rollover valve or ball valve, whatever you want to call it, is straight up and down vertical. If it's not, then it's probably not going to work as well as it should. Uh, even if it's installed up and down, sometimes the amount of fuel and the fuel pressure uh, pushing on it is enough to pressurize the entire tank. And if you, if you remove your diesel tank, your actual fill tank, uh, that came factory with the truck, you'll get diesel fuel pouring out of there. A little, a little like blow back at you. So, so that's one of your two options uh, for like an auxiliary tank, really. Some trucks don't like that. That changes the way you have to approach the gravity feed system. And what you have to do with that is put like a 12 volt solenoid valve in uh, at the drain that you can control from inside the truck. That way, as the fuel level goes down, you get to, you know, half a tank or a quarter of a tank. You open that solenoid valve, it flows through until it fills up and then you turn it off. Uh, the GMCs do not like the constant drip gravity feed. It will mess up the computer. Something horrible. You do have another option, which is what we're gonna try to do here, which is a pull from the top. Um, approach which is just using a, a fuel pump to pull from a pickup tube all right underneath here so i thought i would just give a quick look um this is the uh fuel filler hose comes from outside where the filler neck is uh to this t that's spliced in and this is the uh roller valve ball valve that i was talking about earlier so that's where the hose from your uh, your tank in the bed of the truck hooks up, um, and this one uh, is vertical, so I got plenty of room. I know with the uh, some of the new Dodges, you don't have a lot of room under there, but all right. So I think we are just about finished with plumbing and wiring this thing up. Let me show you what we got going on and how I got it wired up. Of course, the fuel the filters there, fuel filters there, pump is right there. Got the wire and wire loom. Uh, it runs down and basically out the hole in the bottom. Got hose on the vent as well. Uh, that runs out the bottom. So if any should splash over, uh, it'll just drip out the bottom. So when I do add-ons to the truck like this, the big question that I get is um, how did I wire it up? Uh, did I use upfitter switches or, or something like that inside the cab? Uh, and if your truck is new enough and it's equipped with the upfitter switches, that's going to be your best option. Uh, my truck is not. My truck is a 2015, although it's in great, excellent shape. Does not have upfitter switches, but I'm going to show you an option uh, that you can use if you do not have that availability. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description below for this accessory. It's worked out great for me. I believe this one is produced by Nylite. Several different ones you'll see on Amazon. Um, but I'll put, like I said, I'll put the link for this one. And basically this is a six uh, switch panel that you mount inside your truck. Uh, it has a wire, then a set of cables, uh, one set of cables that you go through the firewall to the uh, engine bay. Uh, and you, you have a, a lot of different stickers right here uh, that you can put on it uh, in the different locations. Uh, this rear button right here that turns the power on uh, in the bed of the truck, which operates the air compressor. Uh, and then I've got a, a switch for the horn. Now, as you'll see when I turn these on, you can change these from either constant on off or to momentary on off. 
So what you end up with is a, um, got a little fuse box here underneath the, and that goes in the engine compartment. It's hooked up straight to the battery. Uh, and you wire all your accessories to this and all right, so sorry about the door dinging, but so you see that the panel's lit up. Uh, like I said, this one is set as a, like, a, you know, uh, on and off. So I turn the power in the back on, turn the power in the back off. This one right here is set as momentary. Now, if you listen, I don't know with the door dinging, if you'll be able to hear, but you can hear the solenoid on the horn as I hit the button. So now the question is, uh, Let's see if it'll operate or if the pump turns on and off. I don't want to run it very long because it's dry, but let's just see if it makes noise. Ah, uh, fuel one. Yep, all right. So I hear the pump going, making noise. So that's good. All right, so I drove down to the gas station and put uh, 24 gallons of diesel. Uh, and the thing so that's a little bit more than quarter of a tank here for this 90 gallon tank uh enough to test here i don't want to fill it all the way up have an issue and then have all that diesel to deal with so got that in there it looks like the fuel gauge did move a little bit not a whole lot so now what i need to do is crank this fuel pump on and see what happens so what i expect to hear is the initial uh fuel pump sound come on and then, but to quickly change tone as the line and the pump fills up with fuel. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to hear it on the uh, camera or not, but that's what I expect to hear. All right, so I don't know how good this is gonna show up or sound or anything, but let's turn that pump on and see if it's gonna pump. The ignition is on and pump is going on and Three, two, one. Okay, it did change. But I do hear the fuel being dumped into the thing, so cool. Now let's look, I don't see any leaks. All right, so this is where we're starting at. I uh, zeroed out the trip meter, and uh, that's where the fuel is. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fuel pump on right now. And we'll see, I'm just gonna take a little drive, keep track of the time, and see if that needle moves at all. 4.55 p.m. right now, so. All right, so. 5.15, it's been 20 minutes, and we did about a quarter of a tank uh, with the pump, so. So just make sure you do your own research if you're wanting to install one of these uh, fuel tanks in the middle of your truck. Uh, make sure you take into consideration weight, cargo, carrying capacity, and all that good kind of stuff, so. Anyway, until next time, guys, take care of each other, love each other, make every moment count.